Okay, so <coughs> we will continue with where um, Professor Sierras left on uh, max flow. In particular, today I'll be doing an application of uh, max flow for a problem which, at first sight, doesn't look like a max flow problem. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Um, so, recall first what the max flow problem is. You are given a directed graph. And then you have capacities on the edges. In the more general case, they are real numbers, but some positive capacities, let's say. And there are two specific vertices S and T and what do we want? We want what is called a flow, okay. What is a flow? So, what is the flow? How would you Formally define what a flow is. Assignment of? So, assignment of some numbers to edges. Okay. okay. Numbers to edges. So, I, I want a function. Whatever satisfying some conditions, right. You want a function, a flow is just a function on the edges, right. And what is, what it want, you want it to satisfy some conditions such that, you know, um, summation f of x, y minus summation f of y, x, where for any x, no, so for all x in v minus s comma t, you want the flow to be conserved at every vertex except at the s and t and then you also want the flow, so this is a capacity constraint and that is a, a conservation constraint. And you want to maximize the flow. So, so flow is actually a, a value on the network, which is so the value of the flow is summation f s v. Okay, so flow out of s, and because of the conservation constraints, you can show it is also the flow into t. And so you want to maximize. this number, okay. So, this is the max flow problem and you have seen several algorithms for it. So, one popular algorithm due to Ford Fulkerson is um, start with f equal to 0 on all edges. Because of this, you know, capacity constraint is satisfied and the conservation is satisfied when you set everybody is 0. And then this is the residual network. and to get 
f prime construct g f prime okay so this is the fourth for crystal mechanism start with some zero flow construct what is called a residual network so what, how okay i will come to what is the residual network is look for an st path in that residual network look for a whatever residual capacity which is sort of the minimum possible flow you can augment through that path augment your flow by this new residual capacity your new flow construct a residual network for this new flow and repeat this procedure as long as you keep finding an st path in the residual network so what is a residual network how do you construct it so this residual network has the same vertices as the original graph and you have an edge right you have an edge uv with capacity of e minus f of e right v e that is the residual capacity if if there is a flow at all through that edge okay otherwise it will be whatever the capacity is and whenever this is very important whenever the flow through this direction is positive you actually add the backward edge with a capacity of minus sorry not minus a capacity of this this is just to help you take back the flow you sent okay this is all something you know um so whenever you have a flow of let's say 5 the capacity is 10 then you know if if in the residual network you will have uv with the residual uh, let's give it some 3 so you understand the difference there is still a capacity of 7 through this edge and to be able to get take back the flow you already sent you also have a flow of capacity of 3 in the backward direction you have to convince yourself that without this it doesn't work okay that you need this ability to take back whatever you sent in the residual network okay so this is for i mean fort fulkerson algorithm and um, when does it stop as long as you don't find an st path in the residual network and why is it correct what do i mean by that that when you stop why is it that the, that that it will be a flow it satisfies these constraints will be clear because you sort of ensured this but when you stop why why have you achieved the maximum possible flow so how do you argue this exactly so that's what is the max flow min cut theorem which tells you that for any flow i mean this this is in it for any flow f and for any cut st cut ab the value of the flow is less than or equal to the capacity of the cut so what is a cut you basically take a partition of the vertex set that's a cut but if it's an st cut if s is in one side and t is in the other side then it's an st cut take any such st cut and look at the capacity of all the edges going from one side to the other add all the capacities you can first show that the flow going through the network which is this quantity is at most the capacity of the cut st cut this is for any cut for any any point of time so what you can show when you reach a stage where your residual network has no st path you can exhibit a cut where these two quantities are same then you know that you've actually got the max flow because for any other flow that flow would be strictly more than this cut and you know that that is not possible okay. So what is this cut which will realize the max flow s right so when when there is no st path in the residual network take s the little s and all vertices reachable from s in the final residual network and remaining vertices 
belong to your B, you can show that the capacity of that cut is actually equal to the flow you have. Okay, so that's a, that's the correctness of why the algorithm is correct. It actually finds the max flow. And the next question is about running time, right? How much time it takes? Now, it is possible that if the capacities are actually real numbers, it can just go on forever. Um, there are examples, path pathological examples, and even otherwise, it's possible that your flow is just you know increasing by one by one at every time, and so you will. Okay, so I, I mean, hopefully you've seen this example, but let's say. Even if your capacities are integers, consider this network. You know, right? Suppose so I send a zero flow first, as I, as I did in the first step of the algorithm, and then I find this augmenting path. then I can only send the flow of 1 through this augmenting path. So I will send 1. And then the next time, remember that this edge will show up with a capacity of 1 because of the second condition I mentioned. I might send a flow of 1 through this path and I can keep doing, right? So at every point of time, I will actually be sending a flow of 1 all the time, but max flow value, I mean, this is a you know it's like 10 power 10 plus 10 power 10 okay so it can take a long time even for a small network so there are some heuristics to improve the algorithms including for example i mean you've probably seen one or two i don't know but for example one can show that if you augment through the shortest st path shortest in terms of the length then you know you can actually prove a polynomial running time which Maybe we'll do it tomorrow. So today, what I'm going to do is to give an application. Okay. So another. Um, so have you seen an application of max flow? I mean, students here did it. Saw one in their exam yesterday or last week. Right? There was some application using max flow min cut to find something. But have you seen any other application? Bipartite maximum matching, right? A maximum matching in a bipartite graph, you can. Um, so you have a bipartite graph. I want to find a maximum collection of disjoint edges. So you have construct this flow. This is your bipartite graph. Put a capacity of one everywhere. Direct edges this way. Find the max flow, and you can argue that the max flow will give you the maximum matching. And in this case, you know, the running time is also reasonable because the flow value would be at most the number of vertices in the graph. So m times the flow value itself is also polynomial time. So it's not so bad. Okay. Um, okay. So we will do an, uh, uh, an application today. And that is for um, some some league tournament, and we have four teams playing, and you are in the middle of a tournament. So, in in this version of IPL team, every team plays with everybody else some huge number of times. Okay. Real IPL, they play twice, right? People don't see it. Come on, you're not such a nerd, guys. Okay, so there are some baseball leagues where it happens throughout the whole, you know four or five months where every team plays against everybody else several times. So at this point, we have these four teams. Okay, 
I have called them this, but you know what these things are. And this is the current score, okay. This is the number of points they have got. And there are some, a lot of matches left. Which matches are left? Um, okay, so matches left. one between every pair except okay so there are five matches left this is the current score and there are five matches left four pairs so in four teams six pairs is one match between every pair left except CS, sorry, why am I calling it CSR? I mean CSK. Okay. Question Can CSK reach the first position? Even as a even with the time. So every match has a win or a lose, no no ties. So if whoever wins gets a point, whoever loses gets nothing. Okay. So given the so you are a journalist covering this tournament, and now you have to predict. There's no probabilities you are talking about. It's all deterministic question. Given the remaining matches left, and given the current set of scores, is there any chance for CSK to reach the first position? Possibly tying with somebody else. Yes, no? Hmm? Okay, why not? Can you give an argument? Right. Okay, so max CSK can get is 92, right? So for CSK to remain at the top, we want KKR to lose its matches, right? Which means that in the process, these guys have gotten 92, right? Because, because there is this match left, and if KKR is losing, these two guys have gotten 92. Now there is one match between them left. One of them is going to go up to 93. There is no chance CSK is going to make it, right? Okay, here is another way to argue. Let's look at the let's look at these three teams. Look at the total score and the total remaining matches between them. What is that? So it's 92 plus 91 plus 91 plus three matches left. So it will be two. 277, correct? So if I divide by 3, so because the score of these matches have to be distributed between these two, three guys. So if I divide by 3, it is greater than 92. So one of them is going to get greater than 92, whereas CSK can get maximum 92, right? So this is a question we want to address, answer using network flows, okay? So in general, what is the input? You have a set of scores, current set of scores, and you have a current set of matches to be played between teams. And I have a favorite team. I want to know whether that team has been eliminated or does it have a chance, okay? So 
let us do one more example. The current set of scores and matches the left. So, this has four matches left against each other. There is one match of this left, one of this, and six of this. Okay. Same question, does CSK stand a chance? So, let us let us do the same argument max CSK can get is how many? Four against each of the teams. So, four into three, twelve matches left. So, it can get ninety one, right. Whereas, if I add some of the rest plus matches left between them. Eight matches left. Two seventy three by three is ninety one. I still don't have an evidence that. I mean, this doesn't still prove that it has a chance, but at least this argument that between the three of them. But maybe some two of them can we can argue about it. Let us try so between the two there is one seventy eight plus one one seventy nine by two hmm, does not give me anything. Let us try KKR and DC. 19 plus 87 is 177 plus 6 is 183 by 2. So, it will be greater than 23. I mean, strictly greater than 91. So, between DC one of them is going to get more than 81. So, CSK is eliminated even in this case, but the evidence is not that everybody else are ganging up together to you know get something, but there is some subset of the teams which has this average. Okay. So, let us write down at least the necessary condition which we observed and then we will use the max flow minker theorem to show it is also sufficient. So, more generally the input you have a set of teams S and there is this is the current score
can z get to the top squad. So, you are given some current score which is number of matches each one is 1, number of games left between a pair of teams x and y. I have a fixed team in mind. I want to know whether it can reach the top spot. Okay. So, what we have observed are um, so the max z can get. What is the maximum score z can get? One particular team z. Wz, which is the current score, plus summation gzx. Right? This is the number of games left between z and some other team. What is the maximum it can get? what we observed through these couple of examples is z is eliminated if there exists a subset of teams such that summation wx x in t plus summation g x y x, y is in t is greater than, so let us call this some m. When is z eliminated? If this number is greater than mod t times m, yes. Whatever their current scores plus number of matches left between them. If it is strictly more than m times cardinality of t, then among them, one of them is going to get, because this is the amount of scores that needs to be distributed among these teams and so one of them is going to get strictly more than m, right. Oh, is that this? that, sorry, we have said, no, we have shown this is a sufficient condition. If such a set exists, then z is eliminated and we want to show that if z is eliminated, there is some, yeah, if z is eliminated, there is some set for which this averaging argument works. That is the only way z is eliminated. We want to show it is an if and only if condition, okay. And, um, We are going to construct a flow and argue using max flow mean Cartier. Okay. So, this, this is what I mean by you know, does not look like a graph problem, it is something about some numbers, team. It is sort of like packing problem. Somehow, what is flow doing is that you know, some amount of flow coming from S is distributed across edges. Okay. So, what we are trying to do is construct a flow network where we want to sort of distribute the outcomes of these remaining matches such that nobody gets more than m, let us see. So, I want to distribute the outcomes of the remaining matches. So, that this is the goal, right? I want to see if I can, dis there are summation g x y many matches left and in each match one of them will win, one of them will lose. Can I figure out, can I do, do some distribution of the outcomes of these matches so that nobody gets more than m and I want to model this using a network, okay. So, here is a network. So, I have an S. and there is a t. So, s is supplying some flow 
what is it supplying? It is supplying some of the outcomes of or, or, or it is supplying the remaining games. Okay. So, what am I going to have here? Pairs of teams. Okay. So, I will have a typical vertex here would be a pair x y. Okay. S will supply some flow and that flow will get distributed some to x, some to y, right. So, it will be, a, so this would be S minus z. So, I will have an edge from here to x and edge from here to y and these guys give the flow to T. Now let us see what sort of capacity should I put on these edges. How much capacity should I put here? Hmm? G x y, right. So, G x y is, is the flow supplied by S, right. And magically, I mean that is what the max flow algorithm somehow will tell me. Some of these games are 1 by x, some of these games are 1 by y. And how much do I put here on, on capacity here? What is my goal? I want to make sure that nobody gets more than m, okay. So, in particular, if there is such a flow where nobody gets more than m, I will turn that into a sequence of outcomes of the remaining matches such that my favorite team stays on the top. Okay, so, what should be, so out of this gxy some matches, some score will go to x, some score will go to y, but I do not want the total score of x to exceed m. So, what should I put here as a capacity? m hmm? minus m minus wx, right, because I have already won wx. The point is only about the remaining matches. So, this is my network. How much capacity should I put here? Well, g x y is coming in, you know, maybe all of them are 1 by x, all of them are 1 by y. So, I really want g x y as a capacity, but for the argument, it turns out I will, I am going to actually put infinity here, okay. does not matter, we will, for the proof, it seems convenient to argue this. So, now here is my network, right. I have an S, so I have pairs of teams in this set, teams S minus Z here and these are the capacities. So, for every pair G x y comes here, split into something something and okay. So, in a sense, so what I am trying to say is we, we are trying to distribute G x y sum to x, sum to y and these kind of situations you are, you know modeling it as a flow can help. Now, what can you say if, so this is my flow network, right? this is my G. Max flow, let us give some other name, summation G x y and we call it as G star. If max flow in this network is G star, then what? Then hmm? Z is not eliminated. Why? Because you have a way of, I mean, max flow is equal to G star means that it is equal to summation G x y. So, you can take this flow, distribute them so that it gets more than m totally, right. All these games, remaining games are distributed. So, how would I show z is not eliminated? I have to give you a sequence of outcomes of the remaining matches so that 
nobody has crossed m. What is the sequence of outcomes? I look at the flow, right? If my was d star, I will look at the flow. You know, what is, so because it is equal to summation g x y, the flow on that edge, this edge must be equal to g x y because I, I can't have it less. So that g x y should get, some of them should go here and some of them should go here. That tells me the outcome, right? Out of the 10 matches, if 3 goes here and 7 goes here, then I know that 3, look at this 3 and 7 and I know that this is the capacity. So whatever number which you have decided should go here and reach T and the capacity it cannot exceed M minus WX. So this guy will not have, nobody would have crossed M. So you can take the max flow and look at the flow on these edges to determine the outcome of the remaining matches so that nobody got more than M. The converse of this is also true, right? If Z is not eliminated, what does that mean? That there is a sequence of outcome, out, you know, outcomes for the remaining matches so that nobody has crossed M. Take that sequence of outcomes, turn it into a flow, right? So if for this 10 matches, 2 should go to x and 8 should go to y is your sequence of outcomes. I can put, turn that into a flow and I can ensure that every game, remaining g star many games can be distributed this way. So if z is not eliminated, then max flow is g star, okay? So for one thing, if you want to know whether z is eliminated or not, in polynomial time, you can check that because run this max flow, check what the max flow is. Based on that, you can tell whether Z is eliminated or not, okay. We haven't still proved this condition yet, the converse of this which I want to, I'll get to that. But yeah, okay. So now, So what do I want to now show that the converse of this statement, right? If this happens, Z is eliminated is clear because one of them would get more than M. But I want to show that if Z is eliminated, there exists some subset that satisfies it, right? And let's, how would we show this? Let's, let's see, how do we start? I mean, I said, the hint was that you use max flow min cut theorem, right? So run this network, run the max flow on this network. Z is eliminated, implies max flow on this network is less than g star, right? Because we have, show, we have argued this, if max flow is g star, then z is not eliminated. So if z is eliminated, max flow is not g star, but max flow is bounded by the summation of the capacities out of edge s, which is g star. So max flow of g is less than g star. Which implies from the max flow min cut theorem, the min cut is less than g star, min cut value 
will take the min cut and argue. You know, the, so we will take how will the min cut be? Min cut, min st cut, right? So it will have something from here in s and something from here in t. That is a min st cut, and I will pull out from this cut some subset t that satisfies the condition. Okay, this is typically the kind of argument you use when you want to use Maxwell min cut to prove some you know necessary sufficient condition. It means, okay, so let A B be a min cut of this flow. this capacitated graph. So, A will contain S some set of vertices from here, some set of vertices from here. B will contain some set of vertices from here, some from here and T. Okay. And from this cut, I will find the intersection of either A or B, we need to figure out with S that will give me a set of teams and that I will argue will satisfy this condition, okay. But before I argue that, let I just make one little claim. So let us look at the picture again. So I have S, this is the pair of teams and this is my S minus Z and my A is going to contain, this is my A, and this is my B because A contains S, B contains T and you know other vertices from here. First claim I want to argue this using the fact that it is a min cut, okay. I mean should I say g x y is in A, no I want to say x y is in A okay. because the vertices here are pairs of teams. So, x y is here. So, I have some pair x y here means I claim that x and y should also be here. You cannot have x or y here, why? Let us prove it, right. Because suppose x y is here and x is here, okay. What are the edges of the cut? The edges of the cut are edges going from A to B, right. So, this edge is in the cut. What is its capacity? Hmm? Infinity, you know, this is where I conveniently use infinity. But then you told me that the cut, total cut value is something less than g star, right. So, as So this is one direction that if you have a pair here, x and y must be here because otherwise this is not a min cut. Conversely, if x and y are here, I want to show that the pair x, y is here and not here. Why not? Again, look at the edges in the cut and the capacity and so on, right?
What are the edges in the cut? Well, remember this edge is also in the cut with a value of what? How much? Jxy, right? What if I take this and pull it here? This edge will go away. Will any more edges come in? No, because the edges from xy are only to x and y, but x and y are already in A, right? I can't argue this if x and y are here because then I have these extra things. But if x and y are in A, xy is sitting here, take this xy and pull it into A, the capacity of the cut actually goes down because this edge with the capacity of gxy is no longer there in the cut because it is going here, right? Cut edges are going, edges going from A to B, right? And if xy is in B, moving it to A reduces the capacity of the cut. Good. Now we are ready to, okay, let us now look at what is the capacity of the cut. Right? So this is the picture you have. There is A and B. capacity of the cut AB okay so let's let me just write uh, before that let t equal to a intersection s, right? So this is my set A and this is S. So T intersection A is this set of teams. I'm calling it as T. Should I call it T? Because I've fully have not used T anywhere else. Yeah. T is what I want to prove, and that T is this T I claim. Yeah, so I'm going to the set of teams in A in the cut, let me call that as T. Okay. So now let's say capacity of the cut A B is summation. So where are the cut edges? These edges, right? Summation G X Y, where the pair X Y is not in A. The pair x, y is not in A means that x, r, y is not in A because of this condition, right? So, x or y is not in A means that x or y is not in T. So because of this claim, so first of all the cut edges start with from S to all the edges which are here with a g x y that is the capacity of the cut. But for every pair which is here, I know that one of them is not in here because that is what this claim. So that is what this I've said plus what are the other edges of the cut? What are the other edges of the cut? Hmm? T. Yeah. So these edges, right? And what is their capacities? Okay, these are all in T. What is the capacity? M minus W X. Okay, that's where the capacities we put.
and what do I know about this capacity of this? Okay, so let's see. So I know that this is less than G star, right? That's the assumption. Then min cut capacity is less than G star. Okay, so now you just shuffle things and you will get this. So G X Y, this is nothing but G star minus summation G X Y, where X and Y R and T plus M times T minus W X X and T. So this G star vanishes and bring M times T, okay, bring the other things this side. So what you get is summation W X X and T plus summation X G X Y is strictly more than M times. Okay, so clear? Let me leave you with just one exercise. Um, So, um, you know what a tournament is, right? And tournament is a, um, a directed graph where there is an edge between, a directed edge between every pair of vertices, right? So, let us call it um, So, what is a tournament? A directed graph Okay, so now I want to know, so okay, given a tournament, you can write down the degree sequence of the vertices, okay, the out degree sequence. So, take the out degree of every vertex, d1, d2, dn and um, yeah, um, and I am interested in the the reverse question, given a sequence of numbers d1, d2, dn, is it an, you know, the out degree sequence of some tournament? Okay. The question. So, for example, so that is a tournament and its out degree is 3, 1, 
1 and 1 right. So, you can write it in some order let us say in uh, so it will be 3 1 1 1 is the out degree sequence of the tournament okay. In fact, I mean th this question is more generic you can also talk about any simple graph and ask this question. Okay. So, let us see what are some nice simple conditions the sequence should satisfy. Some necessary condition right. For example, what should be the sum of the out degrees? Even out degrees, this is only out degrees. Hmm? Greater than, greater than exactly equal to right because it is every edge. So, summation d i this is something you need because every edge is counted exactly once. what else you can say is necessary. Let us say I take some k of them and sum, what can you say about that sum? Okay, so, some necessary conditions. I mean suppose it is a degree sequence or degree sequence of some set of k vertices look at those k vertices I mean suppose it is suppose this is a degree out degree sequence of some tournament. Now, I look at some k of them and look at that they are out degrees okay. I mean their out degrees should account for at least the edges among them and there may be more going out like that as well. So, what can you say summation d i 1 to k should be hmm? at least k choose 2. And it turns out these conditions are sufficient for every subset of k of them show that they are sufficient using network flows max flow Minka theorem. Actually, I do not even know whether you need max flow Minka theorem, just the flow may be known, or maybe you do, okay. You know, suppose you have this sequence of numbers that satisfy this condition, what is our goal? We want to construct a tournament, right. So, in particular, let us say vertex 1, and if I tell you its out degree is d1, then I have to figure out where all its edges are going out to, right. So, this is sort of what flow will tell you, right. In this d, I do not want it to go arbitrarily because the other vertex also have some constraints because they also have a certain out degree they should send it to, and so you know set up some sort of a network and argue that you can you know use max flow and 
and, and even use maxwell minka theorem to show that these conditions are necessary and sufficient as well, yeah. Now, I mean this question as I said can be asked even for general graphs, not just for tournaments, but for tournament the condition is simple. For general graphs, there are conditions, you know, not so easy to state, but they can also be argued using network flows because it is all about how do I pack these numbers, these numbers, these di's, then where would I distribute them. Okay, I think I will stop here, yes.